Sundar Pashai, the CEO of Alphabet and Google, he put out a tweet today in which he posted that Waymo is now conducting 200,000 plus paid trips each week across LA, Phoenix, and San Francisco. Walt, that's a 20x growth in less than a year because the last data point we had was 150,000 rise in the Q4 2024 earnings call. Wow, wow, oh, wow, Waymo's growing up. Yeah, I mean, these data points are interesting. I wonder if it's in part kind of a response to a lot of the noise, which we'll get to later, coming out of the Tesla camp with developments both in China and also in California. Is there a, like a pressure for these executives to go out with, with data points? Be that as it may, still good numbers on their part and just showing how this is thing, this is quickly scaling. I think there was a yet another picture Another drone flying over and seeing all those Jaguars, I think it was like 2,000 cars, you know, so whatever, like Google's Google's excited. And, and obviously the tweet coming from uh, Sundar, I think, speaks for itself in terms of the importance of that company, as it was from the beginning. I mean, this whole program obviously originated from the top, so there's still dedication there. A lot of dedication, and we also further had data from the California Public Utilities Commission for the September to December 2024 time period. I want to put this into, into the record. The average weekly rides were 122,000. That's a 50% increase in six in less than six months. 50% increase. That's a heck of an increase. Imagine if it was a stock, it'd be going to the moon. Total Waymo vehicles used. Here's the interesting thing. 730 vehicles used. The average is 23.8 rides per day per vehicle for the month of December 2024. Really good data points. Well, that was definitely good data. Um, so thank you for this CPUC. Not always a huge fan of them and based on stuff I did deal with them in telecom world, but 50% increase is big in terms of the weekly rise. The number that's that's still curious to me is, is that 730 for Waymo vehicles in California. I mean, that's servicing, let's call it 1,000 just to make it easy. That's servicing LA in, in San Francisco. And, you know, that represents each of those markets are about a million people each. So let's say Waymo is doing 2 million, let's call it 3 million. So Waymo is, is in areas that are, you know, where people work and, and live, let's say it's about 3 million for with a thousand. What's the equivalent that Uber has? Well, Uber, you know, in all of California has 200,000 drivers. And that's a population of 40 million. But let's cut that back because 5 million are rural and maybe 5 million are just not addressed. And say it's 30 million. So 200,000 drivers for, for 30 million, which, by the way, is, you know, one car for about every 150 people. That's much less than what industry pundits like Larry Burns, who wrote the book on autonomy, thought that would be required to, to provide this level of service. But I digress. If you're doing 30 million with 200,000 drivers, you can probably do a population of 3 million with 20,000. Again, 30 million, Uber needs 200,000 drivers. They can probably service 3 million with 20,000 drivers. And today, Waymo is servicing 3 million with 1,000 drivers, 1,000 versus 20. Yes, thank. come at me, <laughs> give me data that I don't have. Yes, I get that, you know, the number of rides that are on Waymo are a lot less and, and the locations are different and, you know, a lot of factors, you know, who knows what the wait times are in, in the peak hours, things that we want to get data on, but that's a huge differential. And I'm wondering, since clearly the early estimates on what you need number of drivers to service a market is, has probably been overstated, maybe the need for Waymo is not to get to the same volume of cars that Uber and Lyft are, are trying to use today. Is that possible? Yes, because what Waymo has, which Uber doesn't, is a constrained ODD. It doesn't go everywhere. You look at LA, it doesn't go north of Sunset, it doesn't go to the Valley. And here's an interesting statistic that I want to highlight here. 23.8 rides per day per vehicle. That's basically one ride per hour per day. Could that potentially get to every 30 minutes and then all suddenly then they're doing 48 rides per vehicle? Because that's an efficiency that Uber can't match because... As I said, Waymo has that very condensed ODD versus you get an Uber in LA. Hi, take me to San Diego. Let the driver's got to go or take me to Vegas. The Waymo's not going to do that. So it's a lot more efficient operation. I just think also as a robot, you're going to be more efficient. I'm getting rides canceled on me a lot because of probably the location where I'm going. You know, there's Uber drivers that are waiting in, in airport parking lots. I mean, there's 
there's a lot of things that might make those numbers higher than they really need to be. And this factors into when people are doing the numbers on what are the capital investment that you need to get a return, aside from the fact that the cost of that car and the equipment is going to come down dramatically. Now I'm saying that the number of cars that you need to service the market, you know, may not be, I think, as great as people expect. Again, this is stuff we need to do more research on, but I just see what Waymo is doing in the market today, what the wait times are like, what the quality of service is like. And it's, again, 1,000 versus 20,000 on an equivalent basis. Even if you assume that one robot equi- you know, equates to three different shifts of Uber drivers, it's clearly going to be higher than that because of all of these incremental efficiencies that you have as a robot and how they operate and how you're going to construct that, you know, that model. I mean, it could be that these models that everyone glorifies that Uber and Lyft have, which, you know, matches the supply and the demand, and this is so complex, is because they're overmatching the supply to have a bunch of latent drivers sitting there in order to get those wait times at five minutes. So they, they're going to need, by definition, that many more drivers because you can't rely on the human as much as the robot where you're specifically going to strategically put that asset in the right place. So it'll be fascinating to see as they continue to scale what is that equivalency that they actually need in terms of number of cars relative to what Uber and Lyft has had to, had to achieve. Waymo becomes an efficient business. And here would be something interesting. When Waymo puts 1,000 vehicles in Los Angeles and 1,000 vehicles in San Francisco, what does that do to the wait times? What does that do to demand? And then at that point, based on your math, do we potentially see them chipping away at Uber and Lyft's market penetration? Yeah, and, and again, incremental labor costs don't exist. So it also goes back to, does every Waymo car have to be utilized throughout the entire day. Maybe you have excess cars there for those peak times so that the wait times remain reasonable and keep customer loyalty within the apps. But I don't know, it's it's definitely fascinating data and I'm glad we, you know, hopefully it wasn't too boring (laughs) for our listeners to, and this is very simple math. And again, looking forward to any criticisms that our listeners may have in terms of where we may have miscalculated.